Today we have four time NCAA men's gymnastics champion, Ian Guster. Oh my god, these are hard. So this is my first time actually talking to a men's gymnast. So I'm really excited to learn about you and your sport. Are you ready for all the stretching today? We'll find out, I don't know. We'll see how flexible Ian is today. <laughs> I cannot even do that. Oh my gosh. Pull my arms down. <laughs> this one's worse. Yeah. I basically don't really know much about men's gymnastics. Men's gymnastics mm -hmm. is another division of gymnastics, gymnastics, like rhythmic. It's artistic gymnastics and mm -hmm. it's men's artistic gymnastics. So it's a little bit different than women's. There's six events in men's gymnastics. The floor, where you see the tumbling, the pommel horse, which is like the swinging one with the handles. With the like big mm -hmm. block, right? Exactly. And then there's the rings, which are how they sound. Oh two rings. And then the vault, which is the way you run and flip over the mm -hmm. table. Parallel bars, which is also how it sounds. Parallel bars. bars and then the horizontal bar, which is just the high mm -hmm. steel bar. Out of those, which one is like your favorite? I get asked this question all the time. It just changes, uh -huh. like probably daily. You know, what the assignment is, what stage of the season it is. Mm -hmm. If we're in the stage of our season where we're doing routines, I like doing some routines more than other routines. Mm -hmm. um, but if we're in the stage where we're learning new skills, then that can be really fun on that event that maybe I don't like training routines. Mm -hmm. It can also be different with competing. So I like, for example, I love competing high bar. High bar. The, the horizontal the bar. Long bar. It's really fun to compete. Uh huh. But just training routines at the gym is, is scary. Wait, it's that's so hard. And I don't like doing it typically. That's so but I like training skills what? on high bar. So it does it changes a lot. I don't know. Right now, if I had to give like an average answer, I, I think I like high bar the most. Right high now. bar. The most right. Horizontal bar. Oh. Yes. All right. So this is like another shoulder flexibility thing. Okay. This is like a test. So we have. I didn't study. <laughs> we are folding it into two, and you're gonna like, mm. like that. Is this how you stretch? How do you stretch? Yeah, we so we do moves on the high bar that require this oh, dislocation yeah. flexibility. We call oh it. Oh my gosh, like this. And then you keep going closer and closer. Yeah, yeah. Well, and then we keep folding. But how close can you Try my two. I'll try. No, 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 wait, 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 wait. You can fold the ends. Okay, I know my limit. Oh, oh, he already going to his limit. <laughs> So Ooh. that's pretty easy for me. Uh huh. Nice. I go about it's like shoulder width. That's shoulder width, yeah. I think I can do this maybe. Oh. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Oh my god, that's really good actually. Should I go? No, closer? no. <laughs> you look so. Concerned. No, I'm concerned. I don't want you to. He sees. He's still a gymnast. He's still like you I'm know. Still competing. Competing right now. I don't want to be the cause of his injury. No, no. I'll go a little closer. <laughs> I'm not trying to get sued for right the now. Camera. If you want me to go closer, give me a follow. Go right follow. Now. Yeah. I'm gonna be counting right now to make sure you follow me. <laughs> okay. Now I'm gonna look at it. Uh, yeah, I tried though. I'm following. I don't deserve it. <laughs> no, no, no. Hands together behind your back. And then, I don't know if you've done these before. I'm really bad at this. So I started gymnastics when I was five years old. It was actually for my fifth birthday party. It's kind of a funny story. So my parents got a coupon. Oh. I, can't, I can't do this. <laughs> This is just embarrassing. I can't even like lift my hands up. So my parents got a coupon in the mail uh -huh. for a gymnastics birthday party at, at the gym. It was like military theme because I loved playing with like army men at the time. Uh-huh. I don't know. Like the Toy Story yeah, ones? Yeah, 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 exactly. And we're doing like what you would do at a rec gym when it's your first time when you're five years old. So <laughs> jumping in the pit, hanging on the bars, jumping on the trampoline. And a coach comes up to my parents and he's like, hey, he's really talented. You should put him in lessons. My dad's like, no, he'll play a real sport like football, baseball. A real sport. Right? My dad played lacrosse. And, and hockey, contact sports, I guess. And they, like, he'll play a sport like that. My mom was like, oh, well, like, let's let him try. So put me in lessons and I guess from there, like, yeah. kind of the rest is history. Like, I was always very hyper as a kid. Mm -hmm. And even before I was in gymnastics, would be doing handstands on the couch and, like, flips on the couch oh and, like, stuff like that. And my parents saw that and instead of being like, this is really dangerous, we should stop it. They said, well, we should put him in an, an environment mm -hmm. where he can learn how to do this safely mm -hmm. and to also, you know, get his energy out so he's not as hyper. Yeah. <laughs> well, like, not so we need yet. him elsewhere, exactly. not jumping around and breaking everything in the house. So that's that's pretty much how it started and I was, I guess, good at it. I don't know what that coach saw when I was climbing in the pit, but I guess he saw something. It was the energy. He was yeah, like, we need I that. So. Cause like, I feel like you need to have like a lot of energy to like do all your like flippings and like mm -hmm. try to learn new tricks. I guess so. So yeah. Thank you coach. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you that coach. It's, it's such like a... Uh, Unpopular sport compared mm -hmm. to football, baseball, but also the women's gymnastics. So mm -hmm. 
part of what I try to do on the channel is just showcase men gymnastics. I'm sure same with you with rhythmic. Mm -hmm. It's like people don't even know that men do gymnastics. Also, like even if some people know this men's gymnastics, men's and women's artistic, they do like total different like events. Exactly. Just educating and entertaining people on that has been a huge like mission statement for my account. I used to get so many comments when mm -hmm. I first started out of like, what sport is this? Like men do gymnastics? A lot of hate about just like the sport and, and guys doing the sport in general. Mm -hmm. But I think now it's like almost been so much normalized from just getting eyeballs yeah getting like it, so. attention awareness mm -hmm. towards your sport let's do mountain stretch so i hurt my back i have a herniated disc so if it's too no if it's no no too no, no i'm good i'm good but the point is my pike flexibility is awful because i have, haven't been able to get into a pike for so long uh -huh. it's like super tight you can I'm do whatever warning, you guys I, i'm normally better at this hopefully this will help your pike improve Maybe. i know like you went over like your tiktok and how it like introduces men's gymnastics i have like a similar thing I guess with mm -hmm. my content because rhythmic gymnastics is very minor sport I feel like my videos have like really like brought awareness towards it like people are like oh what is this like oh I've never heard of it can you like tell us about how you started TikTok how you started posting content one of my teammates actually <laughs> shout out Riley follow him he's a national team member gymnast he's one of my teammates he built up a pretty sizable following when I was like a sophomore and I thought that was really cool Riley posted a video mm -hmm. of me doing like a flagpole basically on his account and I was like oh well I may as well make an account mm -hmm. and try to get people over from this video basically uh -huh. so I made that post and then I think a few days later we got sent home or maybe a few weeks later and school was canceled our season was canceled you know while I was home still had the account that I haven't posted on and I was just reminiscing on videos because I missed gymnastics right yeah, <laughs> yeah. all the gyms were closed super bummed out our season got canceled so I ended up deciding to make videos because I'm a creative guy I have a lot of ideas and I always need a some sort of creative outlet mm -hmm. and I've always kind of shifted from creative outlet to creative outlet growing up I kind of found that creative outlet in making content mm -hmm. and at first it was awful <laughs> you know it's like when you start anything it, it was not very good and I just posted so much uh, I posted probably a couple times a day at least for the first maybe couple months I grew a, you know a decent following just enough to where it got, starts to get addicting you know mm -hmm. it's like oh I got you know 30, 50,000 followers, this mm -hmm. video got 50,000 views, and then 100,000, and then, oh my gosh, a million, right? Like, yeah. And it, you know, it got fun, it got addicting, and then once I reached somewhere between 50 and 100,000 followers, I realized, largely from looking in the comments, like, wow, people don't know what men's gymnastics is, and maybe I can help with mm -hmm. that. Maybe I can help educate and entertain people with the content on my channel. That's kind of the mission I, I took on from being a boredom project to yeah. kind of being a mission-oriented enterprise, I guess you could call it. Mm -hmm. No, it's like so similar to my story because yeah. I also started during COVID when I had like online Zoom class training. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm so bored right now. <laughs> well, there was like a TikTok trend with da a dance video. So I did like flexible stuff mm -hmm. and it went like boom viral wow. from that. And I was like, oh cool. What if I show them rhythmic, right? Mm -hmm. And because rhythmic gymnastics is such a minor sport, I thought like no one's going to care no one really knows about rhythmic gymnastics right. they're not gonna care about it but then once i started posting on tiktok people were like oh what is this that's such a cool sport like i want to try and then it also became like my mission to like yeah. kind of spread awareness towards my sport do you think like you're like the face of men's gymnastics oh now? god i would not say that no <laughs> no so the world championships are actually mm -hmm. happening right now at the time we're filming this video mm -hmm. and i know everyone on the team <laughs> i've been getting relayed messages that's like people from other countries have been coming up like oh i know you from Ian yeah. Gunther's video it's like yeah he's also a world-class gymnast mm -hmm. who's you know top 10 in the world mm -hmm. so that's pretty cool too but I mean, it's cool you know know him from my videos yeah. I guess, you know stuff like that it's just kind of funny to see I think people kind of respect it and mm -hmm. I like to think I've catalyzed a lot of people to take a some similar path I'm not the first to do it mm -hmm. and I certainly won't be the last to do it what I've shown is you don't have to be the best mm -hmm. I'm not the best gymnast in the world Although my followers seem to think so, I'm not. We all think Ian's the best, guys. <laughs> nice. Comment, I, Ian is the best. <laughs> I promise I'm not. I'm not the most entertaining guy. I'm not in front of the camera like, what's up, guys? Today we're going to be... Honestly, it was just I posted every day. You can just post your sport and just post you doing your sport. And if you frame it in the correct way and you work hard on it, you don't necessarily have to post every day, but if you work hard enough at it, you're going to be successful. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to be Simone Biles to gain yeah. a following or to bring awareness to the sport. Yeah, because I feel like when people think of men's gymnastics, like 
people that aren't gymnasts, mm -hmm. like are not that interested in gymnastics, if you say like, oh, do you know like a men's gymnast? They'll be like, oh, Ian. For <laughs> me too, like in America, they know me more than the like actual Olympians that mm -hmm. competed. I get told like I'm face of rhythmic, even though like I'm not like a world champion. I never went to the Olympics. He's still competing though. So Olympic hopeful. Okay, okay, I can do this one. We're gonna do butterfly. Butterfly is the stretch where like your coach tells you not to stand around and they go stretch while oh. you're waiting in line and you do the stretch. I like, saw I saw the TikTok <laughs> yeah. where it's like, no sitting around. Yeah. I'm stretching. So coach. yeah, what do you mean coach? What do you I'm mean stretching. Coach? I'm stretching. So do you want to like talk over like any misconceptions people have about men's gymnastics? There's a lot. <laughs> um, well, firstly, the biggest thing is it's different than women's gymnastics. A lot of people think it's the same. So men have, like I mentioned, six events. The women have four events. We share two events, the floor exercise and the vault. vault. So vault is pretty much identical mm -hmm. between both. Floor is different. The women have more of a performative mm -hmm. aspect. So they do they more have, dancing. Like, music too. So men don't have dancing. Men don't have music to their routine. A lot of people see it as not as entertaining or like less performative. Mm. I, I mean, it's probably because I'm a male gymnast and bias, but I, bias. I like both. Like they both have their, their uh -huh. place. I, I really like the kind of raw, like you do like the hardest pass mm -hmm. and you just turn around and you do another hard pass. You fit in more of that like tumbling, mm -hmm. which I, I like, I really like watching, but I think a lot of people like watching dancing too. I'm going on a tangent. <laughs> so women do also beam and bars. So men don't do the beam, thankfully. I would not want to do the beam. I'm not good at it at all. The walkovers. Yeah, nor do I, yeah. <laughs> I could not do a back walk over as maybe you guys have seen. So I'm glad I don't do beam. Mm -hmm. And uneven bars actually looks really fun. But mm -hmm. men don't do uneven bars. And then the women don't do the rings, pommel horse, parallel bars, mm -hmm. or horizontal bar. So that's yeah. that's one of the biggest like misconceptions is that they, they conflate the two. I also I've seen people conflate rhythmic gymnastics and artistic gymnastics as they you've probably seen time. a lot more than me. Everybody yeah. knows gymnastics as like the woman's artistic gymnastics, right? If I say, oh, I do rhythmic gymnastics, they only hear the word gymnastics, gymnastics and they're like, go do your triple something back. <laughs> I'm like, bro, I can't flip. <laughs> so I guess like it's a kind of similar where like people are like confused between mm -hmm. men's and women's gymnastics and people are confused between artistic and then rhythm. It's probably our fault too because we don't ever specify artistic. We mm -hmm. always just say, yeah, you probably Oh, do. I do gymnastics. Because if yeah. someone says, oh, I do gymnastics, it's already like assumed right. artistic gymnastics. Yeah. No, one, no one ever says yeah. artistic. I, I feel I like only rhythmic people say <laughs> artistic gymnastics. So for, for rhythmic gymnastics, we had to be like on a very like specific diet it was more like because our sports aesthetics based ideal athlete body for rhythmic is like lean and long like elongated mm -hmm. so like being on a diet was very important for you Elena <laughs> but for men's gymnastics and for you yourself did you have any like dietary restrictions no no I had taco bell on, the, on my drive here from, oh my god uh, you, you love your taco bell I saw the, I the news, taco bell. news sponsor me for like the third time taco bell Sponsor. What are you doing? Come Sponsor on. Sponsor the gymnast. I'm trying my best out here. <laughs> Cheesy Gordy to Crunch. Oh my, it's like the probably the best thing. See, he's giving you free eat. promo. Yeah, like come on, Taco Bell. All the responsibility fell on us individually. We never had any mandates from the, the coach or anything like that. It would be just performance based. Um, if we looked like we were performing poorly in the gym or running out of energy or just like looking like you look like you couldn't hold yourself up that mm -hmm. day or something, you know, then maybe someone would ask you how your diet's been and if you should be making smarter decisions. Mm -hmm. That's mostly just during the season. We get a, we get quite a bit of leniency and, and trust in our coaches that we're gonna make smart decisions. And I think most of the time we do. When I'm in season, I, I'm pretty particular. When we're ramping up for a big meet, I've never counted calories. I'm more of just mm -hmm. trying to just eat till I'm full yeah. and not overeat and- Making sure can, you get the nutrients right. in. You can generally like pick good choices, I mm -hmm. think, just from intuition. Mm -hmm. And I don't have too much of an interesting answer except sponsor me, Taco Bell. Sponsor, <laughs> sponsor you. <laughs> How are you sitting up like that? I don't know, I'm just leaning on side. <laughs> what kind of relationships did you have with your coaches? Yeah, I think gymnastics coaches in general, I don't, I don't want to speak for rhythmic, I guess, but I'm assuming they get a pretty bad rap for being like, you know, very harsh and strict. strict and like, no, and, uh, no, you're doing bad. Right. That type, yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah. At least in yeah, artistic gymnastics, that's pretty prominent. And there's definitely like truth to that. Mm -hmm. um, I think coaches are oftentimes loud and, and strict, but especially when you're like growing up and 
in middle school, high school. But, um, you know, maybe at the time you, you see it as like, oh, they don't like me or they're being overly strict or whatever, you know, you're a kid. So you don't usually understand. And then after you go to college and you start to respect what they're doing and like how mm -hmm. much they did for you. And, and especially when you start coaching. You <laughs> coach? I, I occasionally oh, I coach, but yeah. especially when you start coaching, you're like, oh my gosh, this is the hardest job yes. ever. <laughs> yes. It is so hard. Because you don't know like how strict to be and also you don't want to like tell them like they're doing a good job when they're not doing a good job, you know what I mean? Right, like, I, I cannot like oh yell. <laughs> Are you okay? Yeah. You know what, it's hard to like wrangle a group of kids, mm -hmm. especially when you're training them to be an elite athlete. A lot of the opportunities I have now are because of my coaches in the past. So even if like they're harsh on you, and I always had like a, a, a good relation with my coaches, but you know, it's like having a, a tough boss that mm -hmm. expects a lot from you. You realize when you get older that their high expectations were a good thing, mm -hmm. not they're a blessing, not a curse, right? And yeah. Although it, you know, it's really hard. It, it, gave you the opportunities you have now, so. Also, like, when you become, like, 18 plus or you're trying to be a coach, you have to take, like, a test, right? You took, a, like, a safe, safe, sport. safe sport thing, so. It's been getting better. It's been getting better. Like, gymnastic coaches used to be really scary. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's getting better. What, what is an accomplishment or an experience you've had that you hold dear to your heart? Um, I don't really have any. <laughs> you know, people say this all the time, and I think Jack said this as well mm -hmm. on, on your last one, but it's, like, you know, it's really like the, the journey, journey, not the destination. Y'all like, have all the PC answers. As cheesy as that is, like, <laughs> it's so true. And like uh -huh. the best friends that I've made in my life are all, mm. all of them, my teammates, pretty much. Mm -hmm. And especially being in a, a college program too. You pretty much live with your, your brothers mm -hmm. and like your best friends for four or five years. To give you a more better answer to your question. <laughs> Winning the, the NCAA championships, especially for the first time in 2019 when we first won, the craziest feeling ever. Mm -hmm. We were coming in as the number two team, the underdogs, by a good, uh, a good margin. OU, Oklahoma University, was a super dominant team. So many amazingly talented gymnasts. They won four in a row, four NCAA titles right. in a row. So we, we go into that meet and the whole year, from day one, we set a team mantra that was uh -huh. new era. We all rallied behind this, this mantra and the meaning behind it of, you know, Stanford has been let's say underperforming for the last couple years. Starting now, we are returning this program to greatness. Mm -hmm. It was ridiculous. We knew we had to work hard uh -huh. to be able to catch them. At that meet, crazy stuff went down. That's probably a story for another day. You know, we had to sub people in. I had to do a pommel horse routine without warming up. Really horrifying. Oh the last routine goes, we're waiting for the score to come up. We see our Stanford move to first place and we just go berserk. And it's like, it is unbelievable. Six years ago now, we came in and it was new era. And now we've mm -hmm. established like the era, the Stanford era, yeah. era, I guess, if you will. It's all because of our, our team wow. culture and our teammates. For men's gymnastics, like just team is very important. Yeah. Cause rhythmic is literally like individually, mm -hmm. like every man for themselves. You want to do your best. We're gonna get a little deeper opening up. What was like a really difficult moment that you had to like overcome? Well, one thing that I like about gymnastics is it's really easy. So I've never really had to oh. overcome any sort of adversity or any difficult moments. Sure. <laughs> so one difficult thing that I had to deal with when I was younger, that was kind of an inflection point in my career. I had a condition in my knee called OCD of the patella. It's a combination of overuse and also small genetic abnormalities mm. that make me more susceptible to it. My knees have been bad growing up. They, they were bad for years. I kind of just wrote it off as like, that's just part of being a gymnast. And then eventually it got so bad to where I, you know, I, I could hardly run. I couldn't really squat. So I had at one point, a mass of, I guess, bone, and it would be like floating around in my knee so I could like move could, it oh around. They basically took out the, the bad mm -hmm. bone and replaced it from bone from my femur. It was such an intense surgery and it was such a rare condition mm -hmm. that I had to fly to Indiana to get it done because that was like the only doctor who had okay. done more than than like two of these surgeries in the in the U.S. I was in a, in a mobilizer, uh -huh. so like a, basically a brace. Uh -huh. I couldn't bend my knee for like seven months. Also, it was my freshman year of high school. <laughs> so for the first month or so after the surgery, I was in a wheelchair going to school. I was in crutches for months after that. No one thought, including 
my parents and the doctor that I would be able to ever tumble. So my parents kept kind of asking like, do you want to do diving? Do you want to pick up mm, like, like a lower impact sport like diving? Like, no, I want to do gymnastics. Mm -hmm. I want to do diving. Um, so I would just go to the gym every day like I normally would. I couldn't do anything that everyone else was doing, mm -hmm. but there's always so much that you can do to improve yourself. So I would do upper body strength. I would do anything that didn't involve my legs, flexibility mm -hmm. for four hours, you know, the entire length of the practice. But like that's like s such dedication to like continue even going to like the gym, like your four hour training. And yeah. you probably couldn't like do like most of like the equipments, right? It was more just training. I wasn't allowed to go on the equipment, you know. You know, it's tough, it was like, yeah. it's hard also seeing your teammates all mm -hmm. get better and having fun and learning new stuff and it's, well, I, I hope I'm gonna be able to do this sport again, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I made that decision to go all in and it's addicting, you mm -hmm. know. I, it's hard to explain to someone who's not a gymnast. For me, I feel like rhythmic is such like a big part of my identity that if I'm not doing it, I'm like, oh my God. What else can I be, right? I guess part of it being a minor sport is it just becomes it's so integral to like mm -hmm. your personality at that point. Yeah. And like you said, it's like what else am I gonna do? There were moments for me where I definitely like wanted to quit. Mm -hmm. Um, have you had any like of those like plateau moments where you're like, oh Oh yeah. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Every gymnast has always thought about quitting, like mm -hmm. probably monthly. <laughs> And every time I go to or the gym. daily, yeah. Uh, before every time before I'm about to slow the routine and practice, I'm like, ah. Uh. Uh. <laughs> you know, if I retire, I don't have to do this routine. I would feel pretty safe saying that every gymnast has felt like quitting yeah. multiple times, and it's definitely something that crosses my mind, especially when you, like you said, you hit a plateau and mm -hmm. it's really frustrating. What I tell people is, you know, if you really feel like you want to quit, like you're not liking the sport, take a month off, take two months off, especially when you're younger, like it, it does in the grand scheme of things doesn't matter. Odds are you're going to miss the sport yeah. a lot and then you're going to you're going to want to go back. Mm -hmm. How were your like peers reactions to like you like growing on TikTok? To my coaches it was a distraction. To my teammates it was like a meme, it was like a joke. Yeah. To my other friends it was like, you know, probably like a, a goofy side project, right? Mm -hmm. But it's like once you get that social proof, like Sports Center posted one of my videos, mm -hmm. which at the time that was like the co uh, coolest thing ever. Mm -hmm. My teammates and like probably other people in the gymnastics community were like, I think they kind of saw my vision and like mm -hmm. a little bit of my mission. So my coach, I think he, he still thought, saw it as like a distraction and because mm -hmm. I would say after gym and I'd do stupid videos Mm -hmm. and like gymnast try this, gymnast try mm -hmm. this, and he, you know, he's like, what are you doing? Like get out of here, go do homework or whatever. I think it was last year's world championships mm -hmm. or some international competition. People from other countries would come up to him like, oh, Stanford, like I love Ian Gunther's and his content. Like, do you know him? And my coach is like, uh, yeah, like, you know, Why I'm you not, know Ian? <laughs> right, like, I'm not like the best gymnast yeah. in the world. So he's like, why do you know Ian? Like yeah. he didn't get it. And then he was like, oh, he's like huge on social media for like, gymnastics and then he came up to me after that meet and was like how many followers do you have and at the time it was it was probably like a million LT. I was like mm -hmm. you know a million he's like what and I was like yeah he's like huh and then like the next day he comes over and he's like hey I have an idea for for one of your videos <laughs> how about your like your parents oh yeah my parents love it too oh they love it <laughs> I remember when I first started during COVID I was I went out to eat with my dad and I was like look this video got like 1.2 million views and he's like that's oh awesome. yeah that's cool like can you make money on it? He's very much like a pragmatic, practical mm -hmm. guy. This was before the NIL legislation. Mm -hmm. I was like, I mean, maybe, like eventually. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay. I would update him on like, oh, like I did this, 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 or I got like a brand deal, whatever. And now he's like, yeah, I'm a, I'm gonna be your manager once you get big <laughs> enough. And like, he'll give me, he'll give me ideas. And so my dad's in his late fifties, and he's now obsessed with TikTok because oh, because cool. like of me. Like yeah. before, he he was never on it. Yeah. And I think when I grew up following, he's like, oh, I'm gonna get on to like watch him yeah. now. Now like I'll go visit home, and he's like on TikTok. Can I ask you a question that you don't have to answer? Sure. Do you plan on doing something like this forever? Like content creation? Like content creation? I want to do it until like I, I, I fall off, basically. <laughs> okay. But I do want to continue doing it. It's really fun. Like for me, because I was just doing gymnastics, right? Rhythmic mm -hmm. gymnastics. My whole like life's just that. That's all I know. And by talking to like a bunch of these different people, different athletes, different industry people, I get to learn like what kind of experience they've been through and just like, you know, just yeah. Sponge it all in and learn that oh, it, life is not just my <laughs> rhythmic gymnastics bubble. Yeah. So basically, 
You're gonna try to keep elbow straight. You kind of want to flick your wrist and just okay. one. Yeah. Uh, I'm a natural. He, he's a he's a rhythmic gymnast now. I don't need to coach him anymore. <laughs> well, you're really good. Yeah, you have okay. good you have good what, coordination. What's this, what's this worth? What's this worth? Nothing. Do <laughs> something with it. But this is a start. This is a start. Okay. This okay. is a start. Let's try double. Oh. I'm, Are you okay? I'm not doing- I hate this sport now. I'm so scared for you right now. Ooh. Oh, nice! Oh, wait, you're good. It's hard to keep your you're elbows good. straight. Yeah. So good. It's just mainly wrist. How do you like, you know, juggle? Juggle, uh, college, and your gymnastics, and your content. How do you, how do you juggle? juggle? Uh, yeah, I get asked this question a lot. I think it's a it's lot like easier punch. than people think. I just try to compartmentalize everything. Oh, so it's okay. like, when I'm at gym, I don't have to think about school. Mm -hmm. And when I'm at, when I'm doing schoolwork, I don't have to think about gym. Mm -hmm. And that was always, I guess, kind of natural to me because I always did that growing up. Like, of course, everything, the gymnastics is harder, the school gets harder. Mm -hmm. But I, I was always kind of used to that, mm -hmm. doing doing both. It did get hard once I threw content creation because mm -hmm. it's like running a business. Yeah. Like, you know, you know, it's it's not it's not you easy. You got your emails. You got to edit. Yeah. You got to take your videos. Yeah. It takes time. Mm -hmm. And when you're Especially when you're already doing, yeah, school and being a competitive right. athlete. Yeah, it's hard to do all three, yeah. to do all three well. It was like working from when I woke up to when I went to sleep. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I guess it made it easy because I just liked what I was doing. Yeah. I liked most of my classes. I liked gymnastics sometimes. Oh, and, I, and I really liked the content creation aspect. Yeah. So it made it manageable because I liked everything. I had a great support system. Mm -hmm in place as well so but it can be hard and i did oftentimes bite off more than i could chew mm. for sure <laughs> so what's like one piece of advice you'd give to athletes i think the like lowest common denominator listen to your coaches mm -hmm. it's like especially when you're growing up it's so easy you know to reject like that authority just listen to your coaches <laughs> that's it so what are your goals now um uh, well right now with gymnastics so I have one year left and then I'm gonna retire. I'm at the point in my career where I'm already pretty happy with all the success yeah. and like everything I've accomplished. And you know, every gymnast of course dreams of going to the Olympics. Yes. And I'm gonna gonna push as hard as I can to, you know, be on that team and finish out the go as far as I can. But man, I don't think people understand how, how difficult it is to yes. make an Olympic team. I agree. And you never know what's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. But you know, I'm definitely a long shot at this point. But I'm getting better every day. You know, we'll see what happens. I'm gonna work as hard as I can to, you know, get on national team again, go to more international competitions, and also push the other guys on the, the US national team to, to get, you know, Team USA back on that podium at yes. the Olympics. It's such gymnastics, and then... USA, USA, USA. Everyone always asks me if I'm gonna quit my account after I retire. I have no plans to stop. Yay, we get more content! <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna do it forever, mm -hmm. content creation, but... I, I'm really enjoying it and it's, um, you know, it's fulfilling and, mm -hmm. but I, I don't think it's necessarily like my passion maybe. Mm -hmm. I, I like inventing things. In the future, I, I hope to kind of leverage my account and all of my, my loyal fans and followers <laughs> to, you know, help support me on, on my, with my inventions, mm -hmm. hopefully one day. Whatever products I come out with, that's well, me right now, but you know, they, they can always change, so we'll, we'll find out. <laughs> but stay tuned. All right, now I'm gonna ask you the last question. Okay. So for the last question, you made me suffer throughout this entire discussion doing flexibility. So okay. you're gonna try something strength-related. So while you answer this question, I want you to do a straddle planche, which what is this. Is that? Who's your favorite creator that you've ever collaborated oh, with? Oh, shoot. There's, there's one right answer. Favorite? My favorite, hmm, I wonder, there's many people, there's a specific person that, you know, oh my god, I can't do that. <laughs> um, but this also gymnastics, I think he goes by the name of Ian Gunther. Okay, that's me. Yeah, no. Well, that was a good answer. Oh, you can stop now. Oh, you stop. Okay. Because you answered correctly. Thank you, thank you. But, oh my god, I want to be able to do it. Nope. I can't no, do it. Um, I did it for like 0. 0.2 seconds, but thank you, Ian, for coming oh, to open you. up. Don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see <laughs> you in the next one. Peace. Oh! Okay. <laughs>